Have you ever wondered how society's changing views on relationships and independence have impacted your life? Relationships are evolving, and more people are exploring paths outside of traditional norms. Whether you've experienced this shift in your friendships, dating life, or even family dynamics, we'd love to hear your thoughts. How have these changes influenced your own experiences and perspectives? Reactionary politics encompass various ideological strands within the online anti-feminist community. In the mass media, events such as the 2014 Isla Vista killings or Hash Gamergate have brought more visibility to the phenomenon. Anti-feminism online is most commonly associated with white males. The community extends as far as female students and professionals. It is associated with terms such as men's rights movement, MRM, menonism, the red pill, the pickup artist, PUA, Gamergate, and MGTOW. MGTOW believes that they are victims of gynocentrism and that the male gender role entraps men as silent breadwinners. Through technological advancement, Men as a race have essentially dug their graves by creating technological advances leading to public spheres and digital phenomena such as selfie culture, wherein females are privileged and rewarded for their narcissistic tendencies, while rendering the average guy inconsequential. Convinced that feminism will ultimately bring about societal demise, MGTO vows to expunge themselves of gynocentric influences and to nurse their besieged masculinities with the support of other men online. At the core of their philosophy is a neo-individualistic dogma to live on one's terms at all costs. There is discussion of actualized masculinity and nostalgia for American vistas and the old frontiers. The MGTO community has its figures, video feeds, websites, Facebook groups, and subreddit. I'm going to teach you something sad about the male race. Men have a behavioral strategy that is a holdover from the cave days, and it looks like conquest. Conquest is the male shadow. It's, I'm going to behave in whatever way I need to behave to get exactly what I want out of this woman. It's not really who I am. And I have some bad news. I'm not saying that it's impossible. I'm saying you're going to have to really have discernment. And I realize that when you're starving to death for that closeness, it's very hard to use discernment. If you were starving to death, no water for days, and I was to poison this water and be like, ah. <laughs> really hard to say no to that, right? But you're going to have to use your discernment. That place in you that wants to drink the poisoned water is a void that needs you badly. It's literally one of the most painful experiences you can ever have going into that consciously sitting with the emotions of that absolute, desperate, starved powerlessness. But if you sit in that void long enough, it goes away. Then you're not a match to other people with a void. And you can believe that the conquest men, they have a void. In his video, Double Standards, Sandman, a prominent MGTO YouTube content creator air, Double Standards, Cock Blocking and Pecking Order all go in hand in hand, and it's human nature, and there's nothing we can do about it. All we can do is accept it and realize it's a bunch of bullshit. Plain and simple. The evolutionary and scientific arguments for MGTO have been laid. The theoretical framework has been laid down for MGTO for the most part. The new world has been discovered and explored, but it hasn't been settled and colonized. The first MGTOWs were Christopher Columbus, who discovered the new world, James Cook, who provided the first map of the Pacific Ocean, and even Lewis and Clark, who explored the interior of the North American continent. But now it's time to settle that landscape and tell our own stories. Make MGTO about our journeys. If any of you have driven down I-95, the busiest highway on the east coast of the United States, you'll know you can drive down from Canada all the down to Florida in about 24 hours. Along the way, you'll see a lot of fast food joints and motels to stop along the way. Women of LA, listen to me. I'm exhausted with modern day dating culture and I need your help. Men out here are no longer gentlemen. I am begging you. End hookup culture. If we cut off the sex, their behavior will change. If all of us come together by not coming together. <laughs> I'm funny. We can change the dating culture. Send this to your girlfriends. Men, just let you know, y'all won't be getting any until we get our fucking rights back. I want you. I want to get to know you. I like you. No, you don't! You just want to touch my private parts! This is not a petting zoo! Oh, one more thing. This is the year of divorces. Every deal we do seems like a divorce. 
beautiful, beautiful girls only date men with vasectomies. Let's take a minute to appreciate these whale pajamas. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful girls delete their OnlyFans. Beautiful, beautiful girls no longer have accounting clients. Beautiful, beautiful girls no longer dance for entertainment. Beautiful, beautiful girls also take all of their photos and videos down off the internet. Beautiful, beautiful girls support other beautiful, beautiful girls who may have to take a hiatus from making any kind of money for the time being. Beautiful, beautiful girls say no as a whole sentence, no, period. Because beautiful, beautiful girls know if you don't know how to play with your toys, maybe you don't get to play with them at all. Here are my predictions for the future of cishet relationships over the next 20 years. History will look back on this period of time from probably 2020 to 2025, but maybe even to 2030, and they're going to refer to it as the great divorce or something like that. Maybe the relationship realignment, but the great divorce is catchier. We're not only going to see an unparalleled spike in divorces, but we're going to see an unparalleled drop in marriages, particularly remarriages, which are going to fall off a cliff deeper than the Grand Canyon. Right now, cishet men and women are starting this game of chicken, so to speak. As women are just now contending with their unhappiness and long-term relationships, men are right now doubling down. They're trying to call our bluff. They're trying to say, listen, uh, I hear you asking for something different, but you've always complied in the past. So if we just hold hold the line, if we hold firm, you'll, you'll comply this time as well. But what they're missing is that this time is different. This time you have a bunch of women communicating with each other and figuring out for the first time that their unhappiness within heterosexual relationships, particularly marriage, is a feature, not a bug. And the only reason we're realizing this is because we're talking to one another. Most of us have spent our entire lives being like, I'm just buggy. Either um, there's something about me that's not good at relationships, or there's something about the men that I pick, I've got a buggy picker, or um, you know, I just don't have the capacity to be happy in relationships. It's a me problem, right? But because of social media and TikTok in particular, we're all comparing notes, and for the first time, we're getting this freedom because we're like, I'm not buggy. It's not me. I'm not, a, I'm not bad at relationships. The system that we have set up for romantic relationships is just a bad system. It's a system that was designed for men in times when we didn't have our own economic freedom. MIGTO believes modern women have been brainwashed by feminism to believe they are right no matter what. She will ride the cock carousel with as many men as possible, most of whom will mistreat her and valorize her feminist claims of victimhood. When a woman does decide to settle for a man, he will be a passive beta type, whom she will boss around and target for his utility value, financial assets, and stability. The beta may be a purple pillar who is aware of the risks of marriage, but tries to hold out for a Disney ending. However, divorce proceedings will inevitably sway in a woman's favor due to institutionalized female privilege. Further, according to Sandman, men invent while women manage and redistribute the wealth. Men do the dirty work and are responsible for maintaining roads, while women are city planners working comfortably from behind the computer. Women are more likely to invest in higher education, but their degrees are dumb and useless as they find themselves working at Starbucks and leaning on their fathers and husbands for support to get out of debt. Although discrimination in the workplace may occur, Sandman states, perhaps companies are paying their workers based on productivity versus position. I didn't realize how much a weight I left on myself by like trying to find the one. There's just always that question lingering of like, is that the guy? Is that my soulmate? Like, am I going to miss him if I'm not eyes wide open 24 seven in my life? As I walk into a grocery store and I'm not like darting my eyes at every man looking for a ring on his finger. Anyone who's not convinced yet that the big divorce I've been married for 10 years. I have four kids. The other day I'm out by myself in the wild, no kids. This man comes up and he's just nice to me. We talk for like 10 minutes. He's not hitting on me. He doesn't want anything. He's just nice. Now I'm never gonna see this man again, but he has me contemplating my entire life. And that's all the fuck it took. Just be nice to me for a few minutes. And I'm rethinking my whole life. I can't stop thinking about this dude. I'm never gonna see him again. I can't stop thinking about it. So the rise of the MIGTO movement has stirred significant controversy especially on social media platforms where vocal feminists and MIGTO advocates often clash. MIGTOW, a movement emphasizing male independence from societal expectations, particularly concerning relationships with women, has grown in popularity over recent years. 
Proponents argue that MGTOW is a response to what they see as an increasingly biased societal landscape, one where men face disadvantages in relationships, family law, and societal expectations. This shift has led to many men opting out of traditional relationships, which some claim has contributed to the rising rates of loneliness among women. This phenomenon has ignited a substantial backlash from some feminist voices on social media, who see the MGTOW movement as a negative and even dangerous trend. From the perspective of MGTOW advocates, the movement is about self-preservation and empowerment. Men involved in the movement often feel that the modern relationship landscape has become fraught with risks and challenges that primarily impact men. They cite issues such as biased divorce and custody laws, perceived one-sided expectations of men as providers, and a lack of understanding or acknowledgement of male struggles as factors that have driven them to distance themselves from conventional dating and marriage. MGTO proponents argue that they are exercising their freedom to live life on their terms, focusing on self-improvement, career, and personal fulfillment, rather than pursuing traditional relationships. This message resonates with many men who feel disenfranchised or disillusioned by societal norms around masculinity and relationships, perceived one-sided expectations of men as providers, and a lack of understanding or acknowledgement of male struggles as factors that have driven them to distance themselves from conventional dating and marriage. MGTO proponents argue that they are exercising their freedom to live life on their terms, focusing on self-improvement, career, and personal fulfillment, rather than pursuing traditional relationships. This message resonates with many men who feel disenfranchised or disillusioned by societal norms around masculinity and relationships. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'd love to hear your thoughts and any experiences you'd like to share in the comments below. If you'd like to support the channel, you can find the links in the description. Your support means a lot.